keeping you connected in Northeast Wisconsin. You're watching NBC 26 Today. Coming up on NBC 26 Today, takeaways from last night's presidential debate as President Trump and Joe Biden faced each other on stage for the first time. Plus, the questions that voters here in Wisconsin say matter most to them. And the court ruling that could mean when it comes to the election, we may not know Wisconsin's results until days later. Good Wednesday morning, Gino Recchia, meteorologist Gino Recchia joining us from his home studio. How's the weather here today? Well, Emily, uh, it's not looking too bad. It's a little bit of cool morning. We've got temperatures in the upper 40s out in Green Bay. You can see it's quiet conditions. Our sunrise today uh, just before 7 o'clock. Across the rest of us in uh, northeast Wisconsin, we're holding on to near 51 degrees in Kiwani. We've got lower 40s up in Anago and mid 40s in Pembine, 37 in Watoma, so it's a little bit cooler farther away from the lakeshore. Uh, it's not going to be too bad in terms of the wind flow initially, but they're really going to start to pick up later on today ahead of a cold front that's going to provide us with additional showers and also maybe even a rumble of thunder. Radar showing quiet weather right now. We could even break into some sunshine as we start off the morning hours, but then as you get into the afternoon, that's when the cloud cover is going to start to build in here, and that is when we could have additional pop-up showers and maybe even a few thunderstorms. You can see some of that moisture moving in here from northwestern Wisconsin diving down southward. So Skycast is showing as we get into the mid-morning hours, still quiet, but as we get into the afternoon, that's when we start to see some of these pop-up showers and thunderstorms. So the umbrellas probably might be needed. As we get into the afternoon, high temperature near 60 degrees. Talking more about some colder weather ahead in my full forecast in a couple minutes. All right, thanks, Gino. Last night's presidential debate is being called embarrassing by some people this morning. Tracy Potts is in Washington with highlights of what happened and what didn't. Good morning, Emily. Good morning, everyone. This was some debate, and clearly both sides had a strategy. The president tried to drive a wedge between Biden and and progressives, and the Biden team says they practiced for the interruptions. Their plan for their candidate was to have him ignore the president and look directly into the camera and talk to you. i be honest, it's a very important Try to be honest. It was a debate like America has no, never seen, an absolute no. free-for-all at times. Not, 90 minutes of constant interruptions, with Fox News moderator Chris Wallace losing control. Gentlemen, is, <laughs> I hate to raise my voice, but I see it tape. seems to be, why shouldn't I be different than the two of you? The tone between President Trump and Democratic nominee Joe Biden often combative. Don't ever use the word smart with me. Don't ever use that word. Oh, give me a break. Because you know what? The president went after Biden's son, Hunter. He was thrown out, dishonorably discharged. That's not true. He wasn't dishonorably cocaine use. And he didn't have a job until you became vice president. Questions about President Trump's Supreme Court nominee devolved into a hashtag. Will you shut who is up, your, man? Listen, who is shut up, man, trending on Twitter. There was name calling on both sides. Everybody knows he's a liar. And you're the, the worst way, you president wise, America has hey, ever had. Hey, hey, Come Joe, on. Let me, let me just tell you, Joe, I've done more in, in 47 months. I've done more than you've done in 47 years, Joe. The moderator trying to draw out differences on COVID, the economy, the president's taxes. I paid $38 million one year. I paid $27 million Show us your tax year. returns. I went, uh, you'll see it as soon as it's finished. You'll see it. The president agreeing to call out white supremacist groups, but then struggling to name one. Well, Peace. then do it, sir. Say it. Do it. Say it. You want to call them? What do you want to call him? Give me a name. Give me a White name. Biden repeatedly trying to distance himself from the left in a debate that struggled for substance. At the end of the debate, both candidates were asked, will you accept the election results? Biden said yes. The president said if he sees evidence of ballots being manipulated, no. I'm Tracy Potts, NBC 26. Thank you, Tracy. The Republican National Committee overnight released a statement on the debate saying, quote, for 90 minutes, President Trump made a confident, commanding and compelling case for his reelection while taking Joe Biden to task for supporting radical policies that would raise taxes, destroy jobs and make our communities less safe. And the Democratic Party posted to Facebook saying, quote, voters across America saw Joe Biden win this debate, but it'll take a lot more work to win this election and restore the soul of this nation. Meanwhile, supporters in the area rallied their bases. NBC 26's Jenna Bree reports. Both Republicans. The energy has been high. It's been much higher than it was in 2016. 
for the president. And Democrats. I've never put a yard sign in my yard, but I know that we have to this time. I have to show people who I'm willing to support. Say political momentum has been strong this year. Biden campaign volunteer Denise Gomer Hutchison says people in Wisconsin want answers on a few big issues. How are we going to keep health care in place for people in Wisconsin? How are we going to get jobs back in Wisconsin? How are we going to fund public education so all kids have an equal opportunity? And Brown County Republican Party Chair James Fitzgerald says people want to hear about law and order. I think a lot of families are going to be looking at that. A lot of husbands and wives are saying to each other, can we send our children out on the streets? Can we be sure that they're going to be safe? While Biden supporters believe Wisconsinites want change. They're ready for voices of reason and compassion and support and inclusion. Trump supporters believe the current president will win again. I know that our dairy farmers are excited about what he's done. I know the hardworking union folks are very, very happy with some of the things that he's done. But both sides can agree. Both candidates will continue to make this state a focal point in the election. In Green Bay, I'm Jenna Bree, NBC 26. Thanks, Jenna. President Trump returns again to Wisconsin this weekend, landing in Green Bay this Saturday. A new court ruling could mean that after the election, we won't know who won Wisconsin until days after the polls close. An appeals court sided with a lower court saying a six-day extension can stand for counting absentee ballots in the state. It means absentee ballots that arrive after Election Day can be counted as long as they are postmarked by November 3rd. Republicans can still appeal to the U.S. Supreme Court. The ruling comes as some Wisconsin and voters have already cast their ballots. 308,000 absentee ballots have been returned so far out of more than a million requested for November's election. All right, still to come, anxiety relief. Some tips for you if you're struggling to cope during this pandemic. It is a cool start to your morning. We've got temperatures in the lower 40s up towards mountain, even some upper 30s in Watoma. It looks like we might get into the 60 degree range, but we're tracking more rainfall before more cold air moves in here. We're going to be talking about how cold we can get coming up. Good Wednesday morning. Coping through the pandemic can certainly be a challenge. In our rebound report this morning, NBC 26's Abigail Hankey shows us how one program is working to help. I say that her laughter is like sunshine for your soul. Music to her mother's ears as six-year-old Viola returned to her favorite therapy in June. Absolute joy in her eyes when she gets to ride some of her favorite horses here. It's it's magic. Because like so many, Exceptional Equestrians, a nonprofit helping those with all abilities, had to close its doors and the arena because of the pandemic, causing sleepless nights for Lisa Kafka trying to figure out what to do. What we do here has such a strong impact, not only on physical challenges, but more recently we're seeing emotional well-being issues. After 10 weeks of research and reaching out to families on how they could safely reopen, they welcomed back several riders, but at a limited capacity. And Josh is one of her favorites, and that's who she got to ride today. So it was, do you think you're going to ride Josh? And, you know, just to see the magic in her eyes, her eyes get so big, and that smile and that laughter. The nonprofit is still facing several obstacles, from having enough volunteers to trying to provide therapy for everyone who needs it, especially as they're seeing more referrals for mental health. And so... We're really struggling because we don't want to say no to anyone and our referrals are doubling and a lot of those referrals are children, young adults and adults that are struggling with anxiety, depression and those things that were present in our world before are just exacerbated now by this situation, by this pandemic. For now, Kafka says they're thankful to continue providing therapy, but will work to figure out how to help even more. In the end, the benefit outweighs all of the tough times that we're facing. And to see the connection between my daughter and her therapist and my thought daughter and her horse, I mean, it's, it's bliss, pure bliss. In De Pere, Abigail Hankey, NBC 26.
Beautiful story there. Another problem the organization says they're facing is money. They are thanking the community for their support and helping them reopen safely. All right, still ahead, the FAFSA student aid application will be available to families this week. What you should know about this year's form. And we're tracking a little bit of rainfall once again later on this afternoon. But right now it's pretty quiet across northeast Wisconsin. You're seeing some of that rainfall off towards the west advancing down to the south. Now, as we get into the afternoon, that's when we'll have more instability. Temperature wise will climb up to near 60 degrees with mostly cloudy skies, but it is going to get windy as another cold front moves in here. We could be talking about gusts upwards of 20 miles per hour and after this some frost advisories. We'll be talking about that coming up after the break. You're watching NBC 26 today with Brooke Hayes and meteorologist Michael Fish. Good Wednesday morning. I'm Emily Byer in for Brooke Hafes. Over the last month, the U.S. has seen a sharp rise in COVID cases among school aged kids. In April, 2% of children made up the country's cases. Now that number is at 10%. That's according to the American Academy of Pediatrics. The CDC says it noticed the rise starting to happen when most kids returned to school earlier this month. Teens were more likely to become infected than young children. The CDC says most children have mild cases and hospitalizations and death rates are still much lower than adults. As fall sets in and the weather turns colder, more restaurants are wearily moving inside. Cities with more strict COVID restrictions like New York, San Francisco and Chicago are all raising their indoor capacity limits in an effort to keep the industry running. Other cities like Denver are extending their outdoor dining program, which allows restaurants to set up seating outside. Nearly one in six restaurants have gone out of business since the pandemic started. Starting tomorrow, families sending a student to college will be able to complete the free application for federal student aid, otherwise known as FAFSA. Liz McLaughlin reports on why it's especially important to get that application in early this year. Melissa Stapley is going back to college with the hope of becoming a dental hygienist, an opportunity she was able to afford with the help of financial aid. You just have to lock yourself away and get it done. Like many new and prospective college students, the free application for federal student aid, otherwise known as FAFSA, is even more important this year. There's $150 billion out there of federal aid, and this aid comes in loans, grants, and even work-study programs. But here's the thing you have to remember. It's a first-come, first-served basis. Financial expert Megan Gorman says it's important to fill out the FAFSA early as more families are expected to apply this year due to the economic fallout of the COVID-19 crisis. The form is available starting Thursday with options to apply online or through the app. People's income that is going to be reported for FAFSA purposes is their 2019 income tax return. But that doesn't mean you can't report to the federal government that you've had a change in economic circumstances. Families facing financial hardship can take extra steps to request a professional judgment review, submitting information like layoff notices or unemployment checks. College financial aid offices then have the discretion to make adjustments so students can qualify for more aid. It seems like busy work and it's not very fun and it takes a while to see the results of it, but you'll eventually get there effort that could be worth the hassle to cut the cost of college. Liz McLaughlin, NBC News. Thanks, Liz. All really good tips to know. Gino Recchia joining us from his home studio. How's the weather today? It was a little bit chillier from my walk from my car to into the building here today. Oh. Right, yeah. I mean, we're going to be seeing this cooler, abnormal pattern uh, for the next couple of days, Emily. That will start to warm things up as we get uh, sometime probably mid-next week. I mean, the warm air is not too far away from us. We had a high temperatures yesterday in the mid-80s out in the Dakotas, but yet... We struggled into the mid-50s here in uh, northeast Wisconsin. We'll be seeing this warmer weather eventually returning. You can see well above average temperatures off towards the west, but it gradually will be shifting farther eastward as you go on into the extended future. What's happening is we've got uh, this jet stream, that cold air up towards the north, but eventually this warm air will transfer off towards the east 
And that's when we'll start to warm things up as we get towards next week. Right now, it's folding on to 48 degrees. Our sun rises at 650, sunset at 634 this evening. Uh, we're holding on currently values of cold spots right now at 37 in Watoma. We've got upper 40s across the Fox Valley, 46 in Pembine. We've got 50 degrees even in Ephraim. Uh, winds, not bad right now. They'll start to gust as we get later on into the afternoon out of the north and northwest as another cold front moves in here. But right now, pretty light and variable. Also, no rainfall at the moment. That's all shifting off towards the east. However, we've got another round of rain moving in here from the northwest. And you can see that right now impacting parts of between Eau Claire up towards Superior, Wisconsin. A cold front moving southward. That's going to spark off additional showers and maybe even a few isolated thunderstorms. And then farther up northward into Ontario, we got a secondary cold front. It's all these pushes of cold air that are going to keep us relatively below average over the coming days. So as we head into the mid-morning, it looks like some mix of sun and clouds, but then as we get into the afternoon with that daytime heating, that's going to spark some instability, and that is when we'll have some of these showers and maybe even an isolated uh, thunderstorm. Tonight, we'll be decreasing the uh, cloud cover, maybe a stray shower possible. Then as we head into our Thursday, the same type of scenario as that they get into the daytime heating. We'll have some of these pop-up showers uh, head into our area. Uh, temperatures, well, as we get into uh, the day for today, uh, getting up to 60 degrees. Then we'll cool off to 45, 54 for your uh, Thursday isolated showers. Coldest temperature will be Friday and Saturday, but look at these low temperatures both Friday and Saturday, 33, 33. That's where we could have some of those isolated patchy frost or freeze uh, concerns. So uh, I know, Emily, you do a little bit of gardening. Maybe you want to bring some of those potted plants inside later on towards the end of the work week. I brought them in earlier because I knew this was coming, <laughs> but today it sounds like you need an umbrella and time to start getting those jackets out of the closet. Exactly. <laughs> All right, thanks, Gino. Still to come, delivery delays. Why appliances are taking longer to arrive at their destinations and what you should know so you don't waste your money. That's next. Good Wednesday morning. Movie theaters are at risk with some predictions saying up to 60% could soon close. The big chains are facing obstacles like limited capacity, a lack of new movies, and a slow return by audiences. Some theaters are renting out space for private parties to stay afloat. People can watch pretty much any movie, including the classics. Many theaters are banking on a couple of big movies in November to help boost business, including a James Bond film and a new Pixar movie. Walmart is getting a new look that might resemble the airport. The retail giant is accelerating plans for its new layout due to the pandemic. It says it wants to accommodate shoppers looking to order online for pickup and speed up shopping for in-store customers. A Walmart official says the company was inspired by airport wayfinding systems, which help navigate large groups of people. The new layout will consist of big signs that spotlight areas like online pickup, Walmart plans to roll out the new look to 200 of its stores by early next year and an additional 800 by 2022. We're all familiar with the shortages that have rolled through stores all year. Lysol wipes are understandable, but refrigerators. Consumer reporter John Matteris looks into worsening appliance delivery time so you don't waste your money. Need a new fridge, washing machine, or microwave? Well, you might want to plan ahead because delivery dates are getting pushed further and further back this fall. It's the latest shortage this pandemic year, but to many homeowners, it's the most frustrating of all. We're talking the appliance shortage as stores struggle to get basic kitchen appliances to their customers. It started with freezers and it's gradually gotten in any appliance category, so a microwave range, anything. There are three reasons. Springtime plant shutdowns, shipping delays from China, and surging demand as homeowners redo their homes this year. So from the Doesn't That Stink file, while well, you need to check delivery dates very carefully. The website mouseprint.org says you will find plenty for sale at Lowe's, Home Depot, and Best Buy. But Mouseprint found a popular Whirlpool fridge will not be available at Lowe's till December 10th. A Sears fridge that first said three-day delivery actually won't be available till October 14th. And a Best Buy fridge just says coming soon. And that stinks if your old one just quit. Solution? Don't be fussy about brand or features if you need one ASAP. 
Bottom line, if you can be flexible about the model, you should be able to get something in a few days. As always, don't waste your money. Keep you connected. I'm John Matteris, NBC26. Thanks, John. Good to know. Three weeks into the season, the NFL is now dealing with its first outbreak of coronavirus. The Tennessee Titans and Minnesota Vikings have become the league's first teams to shut down operations because of positive tests. It comes two days after they played each other in Minneapolis. The Green Bay Packers are keeping a close watch on the situation, which could potentially derail the 2020 season. Also a major concern for the Packers, a huge spike in coronavirus cases here in the Green Bay area. Meanwhile, the Milwaukee Brewers start their postseason series against the LA Dodgers tonight. It's the first time in the franchise history the crew have been in the postseason three years in a row. That game will start tonight at 9. If they win the, this three-game series, they'll go on to play the winner of the Cardinals versus Padres series. All right, turn into weather now. It's kind of crazy to think about baseball. I think summer when I hear baseball, but it feels very cold. I'm, I'm thinking more football now. Well, I mean, when we get into the like the playoff season, Emily, is like, you know, October, it's playoff season. Uh, right. So you start to get a little bit of some of that cool weather, right? A uh, little bit, I guess but for I'm, Brewers, I'm ready nice. for full on fall. I see. Well, I mean, the leaves are changing, Emily, and with some of this cooler weather that we're seeing, uh, clearly that's going to help the case. And uh, we're holding on to temperatures. Most of us are in the 40s, some of us in the lower 40s, but the cold spot right now is in Watoma. They're at 36 degrees. Along the shoreline, we're holding on into the upper 40s and lower 50s, so not too shabby. Yesterday, it wasn't terribly a wet day. We had a few light sprinkles, but it wasn't like uh, Monday where it was more kind of those heavier downpours. Well, it does appear right now it's quiet, but as we get later on into the afternoon, we're tracking another round of moisture that'll move in here associated with an additional cold front. Uh, temperatures climbing up into the upper 50s, so right around 60 degrees, but more cold weather on the way. And we'll be timing that up coming up in the next half hour. Keeping you connected in Northeast Wisconsin, you're watching NBC 26 Today. Coming up on NBC 26 Today, with coronavirus surging here in Wisconsin, why health leaders say we're at a critical point. Plus, new hours at the Oshkosh testing site and what leaders say to do if you've experienced symptoms. And new details this morning about two men killed Monday night in Green Bay. Good Wednesday morning. Meteorologist Gino Recchia joining us from his home studio this morning. Did, did you step outside at all and feel a little bit of the brisk weather here? Uh, the only moment I stepped outside was when I had to grab uh, what's a device that uh, helps me broadcast over to the mm -hmm. studio. So uh, luckily I wasn't able to uh, go outside too much. I'll wait for it to warm up <laughs> later on there you go. Uh, this morning. Uh, yeah, exactly. Uh, well, holding on to right now, temperature-wise, we're at 48 degrees, so it's not terrible. I mean, we've seen colder temperatures earlier this uh, month where we had a couple rounds of frost and freeze advisories. Well, it does appear as we get later on, probably Friday and Saturday, we could have another round of that. But the cold spot right now this morning is in Watoma, 36 degrees. Uh, we've got 46 in Appleton, 50 degrees in Manitowoc, 49 Kiwani, a little cooler up in Mountain at 42, Anago at 41, and uh, 43 in Acanto. Winds are not too shabby right now, but they'll start to pick up as we get later on into uh, the morning, late morning, early afternoon hours. That's when we'll have additional showers and uh, thunderstorm, or maybe even an isolated thunderstorm move in here. Uh, pretty quiet conditions right now, but we are tracking a little bit of cloud cover off towards the west. That is bringing in additional rainfall into parts of our area, and you can see that right now circulating down to the southeast. That's associated with another cold front, and that's going to bring us some more rain. I'll be timing that out coming up in a couple minutes. All right, thanks, Gino. Turning now to the coronavirus pandemic's impact on the 2020 presidential campaign. During a state briefing, Governor Evers responded to questions about President Trump's upcoming trip Saturday to Green Bay and La Crosse and how to try to keep the event safe. One is maybe not calm. These two uh, municipalities uh, and cities are ranked right up towards the top of all the uh, places in the country to go to. So that's what, number one, he could not come. The second thing that could be done is for him to insist that if people are there, they wear a mask. That can, he can make that happen. He could wear one, too. 
Wisconsin health officials reported 17 more deaths related to coronavirus yesterday, bringing the state's death toll to 1,300. They also reported more than 2,300 new cases of the virus statewide. There are now more than 20,250 active cases of COVID-19 in Wisconsin. State health officials say we are at a critical point in the pandemic. Officials say we've now exceeded the capacity of local health departments to do contact tracing for everyone who needs it, which is a problem because it's one of the ways to stop the virus from spreading. Meanwhile, Winnebago County urges anyone who is experiencing symptoms of COVID-19 or has been in close contact with someone who has tested positive to get tested. Leaders announced new hours at the Oshkosh testing site now open 10 to 6 Monday through Friday and 8 to 4 on Saturday. The testing site is located at Sunnyview Expo Center. Registering ahead and, and, and or using the app is really um, is really key um, and being and then staying home. Um, um, after your test. Those would be the two things. Winnebago County health officials also ask people to stay home after taking the test until they get their results. Do not wait to quarantine. People could see a wait of more than two hours at the site to get a test. We have new details about two men who were shot and killed Monday night. It happened off the 500 block of Clement Street in Green Bay, and police say yesterday morning an officer was stabbed in the face after chasing down the suspect in the crime. Our Eric Crest has the latest. It was about 8.30 on Monday night here off of Clement Street in Green Bay when someone dialed 911 with a report of shots fired here at this apartment complex. Now when officers went inside, they found a man dead in the hallway and... They entered an apartment and found another deceased male. Both appeared to have been um, shot. Commander Paul Abel says detectives would spend much of the night trying to find a motive for the crime. We believe all individuals involved um, are known to each other. And police were also seeking the person responsible for the shooting. Throughout the night, our detectives developed a suspect. Their suspect was identified early Tuesday morning and police tried to chase him down at around 6 a.m. But investigators say the man fled in the car, ultimately crashing here at the intersection of Dowsman and North Broadway. Now at that point, police say the man tried to run, but officers caught up with him and he pulled the knife. One of our officers was stabbed in the face. The suspect had a cut to his wrist. We believe that was self-inflicted. Both the suspect and the officer were brought to a local hospital for their injuries, and the Green Bay Police Department shared Tuesday afternoon that the officer who was stabbed has been released from the hospital after undergoing reconstructive surgery. He is going to be fine. Uh, he's having some plastic surgery done right now to take care of his wound. For now, detectives will continue working on a motive for the crime. And as of Tuesday evening, investigators say they are not looking for any additional suspects. In Green Bay, Eric Crest, NBC 26. Thank you, Eric. Still ahead in sports, Notre Dame Academy won't play football this fall. A look at why the Green Bay High School is shifting to spring. And you shouldn't be putting your umbrellas away anytime soon. We are tracking another chance of rainfall later on this afternoon. Looks like the morning right now is appearing dry, but we're tracking that band right there with another cold front. That's going to spark off a few showers and maybe even a few isolated thunderstorms before more cold air moves in here. We're going to be timing that up coming up after the break. And now sports with Brandon Kinnow. Second-year linebacker Ty Summers has received praise from his teammates and coaches for his performance on Sunday night. Summers filled in for the injured Christian Kirksey at inside linebacker. He not only had nine tackles, but also took over the communications helmet, relaying the coaches' calls to the rest of the defense. A pretty solid NFL debut, but yet yesterday he described his performance as, quote-unquote, not great. My wife tries to tell me I need to focus more on the positive, um, but unfortunately, that's just that's just not me. I looked at um, that other stuff, uh, you know, things I did wrong. I kind of focus on those a little bit. You know, I, I had the chance to make a couple tackles that I felt were pretty good looking at, and I was proud of myself for that. But um, for me, it's always the ones that I left out there. Um, and I know especially that long one on Kamara, that could have really um, helped us there. I mean, stay to score, so. Things like that are the ones that kind of, you know, fuel me for the next week, the next opportunity to make sure that I, you know, don't do that again. 
The Packers are off today. They'll return to practice tomorrow in preparation for Monday night football against the Falcons. Notre Dame Academy is shifting football and boys' soccer to the spring. Last week, the school suspended football activities after one player tested positive for COVID-19. Now, as the school goes fully virtual, it is pushing those sports back to the spring window. I spoke with their athletic director, Matt Koenig, yesterday about that decision. Our kids had worked you know, so hard, and, and our coaches have been very diligent about how they were handling practices and keeping kids separated out and and everything. And so, you know, under the circumstances of everything going on, not only in Brown County and in Green Bay and, you know, looking at our school environment that we have here, it was a, a safer situation to shut things down to uh, move to the spring. Are you still happy with the decision you made to stay in fall, given the way that it's turned out at this point? I, I am. I, I am. I mean, I, I wish things were different. You know, I wish, um, I, I wish, Things in Brown County and the Green Bay area were uh, a little bit better, but just over the last, you know, two weeks, I mean, the numbers of positive cases have just grown dramatically and, and, you know, you can't control that. We can control only what we can control. And I'm proud of our efforts. I'm proud of the, the fact that we all did what we needed to do to try to make it work. And, you know, I don't, I don't want to say that I'm disappointed that we fell short. I look at it as, as a little bit of a speed bump in our in our efforts to try to get these kids active and going again now in the summer the fox river classic conference moved as a whole to the spring notre dame was the one school in that conference that decided to stay in the fall Koenig says he does expect that they'll compete against their typical frcc opponents when they do play in the spring that's all for sports have a great day All right, well, thanks, Brandon. We are going to be seeing temperatures just a touch warmer today with some of that sunshine early on in the morning. But as we get into the afternoon, another cold front moving in here, and that's going to spark off a few additional rain showers. Also, it's going to turn breezy. Winds upwards uh, 30 miles per hour at times out of the northwest. Behind it, though, more cold air. We're going to be breaking it down in the full forecast after the break. You're watching NBC 26 Today with Brooke Haves and meteorologist Michael Fish. Good morning, I'm Emily Byer in for Brooke Haves. Just a few days before a planned price hike for citizenship and other immigration benefits, a federal judge has put in a stop. The UD District Judge says it's because the last two chiefs of the Homeland Security Department may have been appointed illegally. When Kirsten Nelson resigned last April, the judge says Kevin McLean improperly jumped to her position as acting secretary. McLean was supposed to be seventh in line when he resigned. Chad Wolf became acting secretary, who the judge says was also not next in line. Homeland Security says it's reviewing the judge's ruling. The American Heart Association is raising concerns about women and heart disease. A new study showed just 44% of women are aware heart disease is a leading cause of death. That's down from 65% in 2009. The lack of awareness rose the most in women ages 25 to 34 and among women who identified as Hispanic or non-Hispanic black. The American Heart Association says they need family doctors, obstetricians, and gynecologists to educate younger women about risk factors they may experience when starting a family. A lot of risk factors that occur during one's pregnancy or adverse um, risk factors such as gestational high blood pressure, gestational diabetes, something called preeclampsia, where your blood pressure becomes very high and you spill a multitude of proteins. Those are actually risk factors for women in the future to have underlying cardiovascular conditions. The American Heart Association says women need to be aware of symptoms that may indicate a heart attack but could be mistaken as something less severe. Those include shortness of breath, jaw pain, nausea, vomiting, and indigestion. The association also wants women to be aware of less common risk factors for heart disease. Heart disease is an inflammatory process. So if you have underlying inflammatory conditions such as autoimmune disease like lupus or rheumatoid arthritis, for example, or even inflammatory bowel disease, that can put you at a higher risk for heart disease. The American Heart Association says 80% of risk factors are preventable. Those include obesity, diabetes, smoking, and alcohol use. Halloween can be a scary time of year, but a lot of families are trying to make it less frightening this year because of COVID-19. John Maroney shares a few ideas. 
It's that time of year, and the decorations are up at Justin Saviano's house, where Halloween will be celebrated a little bit different because of COVID-19. Probably have something around the yard, maybe a scavenger hunt, do some pumpkin carving. Halloween marks the first fall holiday during the pandemic. The CDC says people should avoid trick-or-treating and parties. Here in Massachusetts, some communities have banned door-to-door -door visits altogether. I'll have trick-or-treats, and if the kids come to the house, I'll have something to give them. And if they don't, well, I guess I'll have to eat it myself. The state is recommending you refrain from Halloween activities like handing out candy if you feel sick, tested positive for COVID-19, have been exposed to someone who has, or have traveled to high-risk states in the last two weeks. At the Spirit Halloween store in Dedham, they're taking all the necessary precautions. There are COVID-19 accessories as well, including masks and these extenders to collect candy at a distance. It's been more popular this year than last year because last year wasn't understood. This year it's being understood. It's still a month before Halloween, but business is picking up. Costume sales are slower, but decorations are big as families look for holiday alternatives. I've had a family come in. They said, you know what? We're not going anywhere. We're not doing anything, but we're going to sit together in the living room in our costumes and watch movies. The kids can still have their costumes and dress up and uh, kind of enjoy the time of year. All right, Gino, I can think of two things that are scary around Halloween time, and that is running out of candy and the potential yeah. for snow. We've seen it that sometimes. That is scary, especially up here. Yeah. <laughs> One thing, like, with this whole kind of, like, current situation is, like, as a kid, if, like, you know, you don't have a lot of trick-or-treaters, well, all that candy that, you know, your parents bought, well, now you get to eat it all. That, so, yeah, exactly. Uh, That's kind of a, a plus. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there you go. So watch <laughs> out for the cavities, kids. Uh... We are uh, holding on to temperatures yesterday that were in the mid-80s off towards the west. But for us, it was quite a bit <laughs> a drastic change. 56 degrees. We are going to be seeing a gradual warm-up. Right now, strong northwest flow is preventing us from really tapping into some of this warm air. But uh, temperature outlook does show a eventual return to normal temperatures, which is the lower 60s for this time of the year. And then we'll go above average as we head later on into next week. And the reason why that cold air retreating up into Canada and this warm air traveling eastward into the central part of the country, where it's right now holding on into the western part of the country, where we're seeing an to uh, some pretty cool weather. 48 degrees right now. We've got the sunrise at 650, sunset at 634. Wind's pretty light out of the southwest. We'll start to pick up later on this afternoon. We're holding on to 36 in Watoma. Upper uh, mid and upper 40s across the Fox Valley, near 50 degrees along the shoreline, and uh, 39 right now in Anago, but uh, Watoma is a cold spot. Winds light out of the west and southwest, but once that cold front moves in here, we are going to be seeing the wind shift out of the northwest, and it will turn breezy, especially by the mid-evening hours, upwards of gusts of 30 miles per hour. Radar showing mostly clear to partly cloudy skies across northeast Wisconsin, but far, farther to the west, you see this line of rainfall. Well, we got a secondary cold front that's going to spark off a few showers and even perhaps an isolated thunderstorm with some of that daytime heating causing some, some uh, instability in the atmosphere. There's that first cold front moving in. We've got a secondary cold front up towards the north, and right now that rain falls with a trough of low pressure that's uh, moving eastward. So skycast, as we get into the mid-morning, 11 o'clock, still pretty quiet, but then as we get to the afternoon, that's when the few pop-up showers and perhaps an isolated rumble of thunder is possible. As we get into tonight, once the sun sets, the atmosphere will stabilize a little bit. Can we see an isolated shower? Sure, but it won't be the same coverage as what we'll see later on this afternoon and evening. Then for uh, Thursday, as we get into the day, we have additional showers and a few uh, pop-ups starting to move in here. Uh, so temperatures for the uh, afternoon will be starting to climb up. Right around 60 degrees, we'll cool off to 45 overnight tonight. Northwest winds at 10 miles per hour. Then for tomorrow, we'll climb up to 54. And 74 cast, Emily. We've got 54 Thursday, 48 on Friday. But the big point here, 33 Friday morning and 33 Saturday morning. So it looks like some frost and freeze, but we do warm up as we get towards uh, next week. Those cooler temps, they're on their way. I see them. All right, thanks, Gino. Still to come, a sibling rivalry turns into a teen earning his master's degree. That story's next. But first, let's take a live look outside on our Green Bay Tower Cam. We're still waiting to see that sunrise here this morning. It's a high of 60 degrees on your Wednesday morning. You're watching NBC 26 Today. Stay with us. 
Here's a great story. A South Carolina boy earned a master's degree at the age of 14, the third youngest person in the United States to do so. Tanya Mendez has his remarkable story. In the crowd of caps and gowns and newly crowned college graduates, Come on. Yeah. a kid from Fort Mill, and we do mean kid. I'm 15. Kamal Yera, 15 now, but was 13 the day he graduated from college. At 14, he completed his master's. This master of science. And now at 15. First semester, all pass. Second, all pass. Days away from receiving his MBA. That's not what the average kid does. Okay. Quietly unassuming and a little shy, but Kamal has come a long way since he was the middle schooler with a secret in the back of a high school classroom. Kamal was an extremely average guy until 10 years, you know, he was doing all, all the average kid and everything is fine and suddenly it changed. That change, the Yeras say, stemmed from brotherly love and a little sibling rivalry. They wanted to push their limits and move forward. Kamal's brother, just one year older, it was his idea to graduate from college as early as he could. Kamal followed in his brother's footsteps. So both did together and both finished the bachelor degree at the same time. Kamal's family now believes he's the third youngest child in the entire United States to earn a master's degree. Kamal let us in on his three keys to success. Study hard, be disciplined, and go past your limits. And as you would expect, those limits set high for Kamal. Ask him where he wants to be in five years at the ripe old age of 20. I see um, myself being the CEO of my company. Based on what he's done so far, believe him. I don't know how to define. <laughs> I'm, I'm proud. That's something uh, to have uh, those degrees so early in your life. I mean, it, it took me twice the amount of time just to get me a, my bachelor's, yet he's getting his master's. I mean, kudos off to him uh, for getting all of that done. Well, as we get into the afternoon, we will see a few isolated showers and maybe even a pop-up thunderstorm with some of that instability in the atmosphere. As we get into tonight, we'll start to see the decreasing clouds, an isolated shower possible, and then as we get into the day for tomorrow, an additional chance of a few pop-ups once again as we got that cold air vecting down into the south. Uh, Temperature-wise, we'll be climbing up into right around 60 degrees. Uh, should be saying 60, but then as there